Hey folks, I'm coming to you here from Westchester, Pennsylvania, and I want to show you the unboxing video. Many of you are ordering our product from out of the area, so you'll get a box like this shipped to you on top of the pallet uh, from an LTL company that will come deliver to your house in a truck. I'll give you some pointers on inspecting the package before you sign for it, and then I'll also show you how to unbox it and put it together. There's very little assembly, so it's very easy, but the uh, video will be helpful anyway. When your box arrives, it'll be on a pallet. Uh, this one's not on a pallet just because I'm delivering it myself, but it will be standing up uh, with this side up. So it's very important when you handle the box that you pay attention to the this side up uh, indication. So as long as the arrow is up, you're good. Uh, there's a chance of damaging the wagon if, if it's uh, in another position without the arrow up. When you receive the package from the LTL company, the box should be in pretty decent shape. Uh, there may be some minor scratches and dings, uh, but there should be no punctures that go all the way through the box. It's a really thick box. The box is you know, half inch, three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, so what you wanna do when you receive the package is take a good look at it uh, before you sign for it, okay? And you wanna look for any major holes or damage to the box. Something like this here, uh, where it's just the, the edge of the box that was scraped. It doesn't go all the way through. Uh, that's not really a concern. But what you want to pay attention to a lot of times, if there's a forklift handling this and they miss the pallet and there's a puncture hole from the forklift that goes right through the bottom, uh, you'll want to take a picture of that and note it on the uh, BOL form that, that they'll ask you to sign. Uh, when you sign for the package. So any major damage to the box, you're going to want to make sure uh, you note on the form that you sign. This here on top of the box is your unit number. Uh, it's also on the wagon frame, but that's just for your information. And it, th there will be straps around the box similar to this. Uh, and this is the lid. Uh, so the lid is on top um, of the box and this would be the bottom so that you know you can either have it standing up on this side or you can lay it down uh, this way to be laying on the bottom. The assembly is really easy the only tools that you'll need is a pocket knife uh, and that's basically it. Uh, I'll give you a couple pointers on, on maneuvering the package uh, when it's standing up on the right side it's, it's pretty easy to maneuver if you just use the you know, tip it in one direction or another and use the corners to turn it. Okay, so it's relatively easy to maneuver uh, when you know how to handle the box. So I'm just gonna push it back a little bit. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is lay the box down on the bottom so that the lid's on top, you know, making sure that the arrow is gonna be pointing up. So you just grab it by the handle. The box weighs, um, you know, about a, Two, well, on the pallet, it's about over 200 pounds. Without the pallet, it's 180 pounds. Uh, and the wagon itself weighs 150 pounds with the railings and everything. Without the railings, it's 130 pounds. So it is relatively heavy, but since it's standing up tall, it's pretty easy to handle with one person. Uh, so you grab it by the handle here and just set it down uh, from here. And then you're gonna wanna get your knife and cut the straps. And then take the lid off here and put it off to the side. And then I'll give you a look at what's inside the box here. Once you have your box open, this is what you'll see inside. You have your owner's manual. Uh, the owner's manual goes into pretty good detail about uh, unboxing and assembly. Uh, so, you know, you can read that as well. You have, this here is, is from the wheel manufacturer. Uh, it's a template so that you don't over inflate the wheels. You don't want to go over this diameter. Uh, you actually have to have the wheels off to do that though, so I, I don't find it very useful since the, uh, the wheels are already on the wagon. Uh, I highly recommend getting yourself a low pressure air gauge. Um, this one here just goes from 0 to 15 psi. You get it on Amazon for, I don't know, 12 bucks or something like that. That's also mentioned in the manual, so definitely get yourself one of these. And honestly, I would just kind of toss this thing. Um, and then you have all of your components that are shrink wrapped. 
Uh, these are the railings, the long railings. Uh, just be careful uh, handling, you know, you don't want to put this down on the powder coat on hard surfaces. You know, you could chip your paint. Just put it off to the side carefully. Uh, this here is your handle. Um, there's also the keys that are strapped to the handle, which I'll show you later. Another long railing. This here is going to be your charger. Okay. Uh, I'll go over that, how to use that a little bit later. And then your front and rear railings as well. And that's basically it. Other than that, you have the wagon right here. And then underneath that, the rear wheels are attached to the wagon, but the foot wheels are kind of in the middle of the box underneath the wagon. And I'll show you how to put those on and take the wagon out. Now that you have everything out of the box, I'm gonna show you how to remove the wagon and assemble it. Uh, it can be done with one person, but I uh, highly recommend two people if you have a, a, set, a spare set of hands around, but I can uh, show you how to do it with one person. You're going to need the lid, uh, to the box. This is where I'm going to set the wagon frame on so it doesn't hit the hard ground and scratch the powder coat. So what you're going to want to do, what we're doing here is we're going to stand the box up, you know, so that the arrow is still pointing up. Uh, and then we're going to transfer the wagon from the box to the lid. So you want to kind of set that up where there's enough distance to get this standing up without hitting the lid like so just like that. And then just keep a hand on this, on the wagon, so that it doesn't uh, fall out. And I'm gonna switch the camera angle because you can't really see what I'm doing. Once you have the box standing up, then you can just kind of pull the, the wagon frame out some, and you'll be able to see the wheels tucked in back here. Uh, and once you pull that out a little bit more, then you can just grab the wheels. And I like to put the wheels right on top of the box so that I have easy access to them in a little bit. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is put the wheels on uh, and then get the box out of here and then we can set the wagon down. Uh, so I just this is the tongue of the wagon, just straighten it out a little bit. And to put the wheels on, uh, these clips, these O-ring clips just come right off. And then there are two plastic spacers on here. One is wider than the other one. Uh, the wagon was designed to work with wheelies wheels, the 30 centimeter wheels. However, uh, since they couldn't fulfill our order in time for manufacturing, we went with the alternative wheel that's a little bit more narrow. So these plastic spacers are used for these wheels only. If you are to replace your wheels down the line with wheelies wheels, you would no longer need these spacers. Uh, but the skinny spacer goes on first where it was uh, when you originally pulled it out of the box. And then you're going to want to slide this wheel over top of the axle here uh, with your air, air valve out to the outside. And you want to put the wide spacer on and put your clip right back on. And that's basically it. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side here. Take my O-ring off, take the spacer off, put the wheel on, put the spacer on, put the O-ring back on. Now we have all four wheels on. Uh, and we can remove the wagon from the box and then set it down so it's a lot easier to work with at that point. Right now, uh, the bottom of the frame is still sitting on top of this box. Uh, it's real easy to just put your hands down here and grab onto uh, the steering assembly and kind of use your leg here to, to hold the weight of the wagon while you just kind of pull up and pull it out. And I just transferred it onto the lid now I'm just going to get rid of this box here. Get it out of the way. And now we're ready to set the wagon down. Back, we just sit it down on the back wheels. And then it's actually pretty light at this point because most of the weight is in the back of the wagon. And just set it down. All right, I went ahead and took the shrink wrap off of everything. Uh, and here is our wagon handle. Uh, it's one of the first things you're going to want to do and the keys are just electrical tied to the, the handle there, the hand grip. So you just take your uh, knife out and just get underneath of that without cutting the rubber and there's your keys. 
All right, and then the wagon handle. Um, when you're looking at the wagon, you'll want the, the uh, wire connection on the right-hand side. And you want to take this clip off here, put the handle down into the tube until it hits the bottom, and then put this clip back in, the pin, just like that. And then I'll show you how to get this underneath the wagon. All right, so underneath the wagon, uh, you'll see this black and greenish yellow uh, female receiver. Uh, this male end just goes right into the female end. There's only uh, one way it goes in with this clip. Uh, that clips into this little uh, plastic piece right here. Uh, it won't slide in if you don't have it the right way. So if you don't have it the right way, just turn it 180 degrees uh, and you just push it until you hear a click and then that's all hooked up and ready to go. Uh, to turn the wagon on, you have your keys. This is your uh, your ignition here, put the key in, and then turn it clockwise 90 degrees and you'll hear the wagon make a click, clicking noise indicating that it's on, just like that. Uh, right here is your uh, USB charging ports and your battery indicator. You have to hit the power button in order for that to work. Uh, the wagon's been sitting in a container uh, for probably a couple months. Uh, it was fully charged when it went into the container. Uh, however, the battery loses some charge over time, especially in warmer temperatures. Uh, right now it's reading 25.8 volts. Uh, when it's fully charged, it'll read over 27, and then it'll quickly drop down into the 26 range. Uh, and then when it gets down to 23, the wagon won't power itself anymore. Uh, but we do have a neutral gear so that you could uh, still use the wagon uh, without the motor. And then this here is your charging port where you charge the wagon itself. Uh, and this is your box with the battery charger in it. So in here, you have this brick uh, that is the charger. Pull that out of the wrapper. And you'll have the actual cord that goes into your electrical socket. This uh, two prong end of the cord here goes in there and then this three prong uh, male adapter goes into the female end on the control panel and there's a little arrow on this uh, that that goes up when you just push it in just like that now always have the uh, the wagon turned off when you charge and when you plug when you plug this into the electrical socket, the top power light will, will light up, uh, indicating that you're getting power to it. And when you plug this into the wagon, this bottom charge light will light up red, indicating that it's charging. And then when it's done charging, that will change to green. All right, we're almost ready to go here. Just got to put the railings on, check the tire pressure, uh, and then we should be good to go. So to put the railings on, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just hold it with two hands and insert the bottom plastic pieces into the frame. Just you might have to push it down or wiggle it a little bit to get it on, but that went on pretty smoothly. And then repeat the process for all four sides. This is the long one here. And then to get them off, it's the same thing, but uh, obviously opposite. Now, uh, they might be a little bit tight, uh, so you'll just have to pull up and wiggle at the same time. Uh, you might have to give a good good little tug to get them up, but they come off uh, pretty easily. And the last one here, like so. And then what you'll want to do is, uh, once you get your low pressure air gauge, um, you know, check the tire pressure. Likely these tires from sitting in the container and, and through transport have lost a little bit of air, uh, but you'll want to uh, fill up the tire. There's these warnings on each one of these that you do not exceed three PSI. Uh, that's pretty important. Uh, I would actually recommend uh, running them at, at two PSI. Uh, the flatter they are, the, the better they get through the sand. They're, they're intended to, to run a little bit flat, 
and when they flatten out, more surface area hits the sand so you get better grip. Once you have your wheels to the desired pressure, uh, you're really good to go at that point. Uh, the, the chain already comes lubed, uh, so you don't have to do anything there. Um, and that's about it. One last thing I can show you real quick is you know, how to operate the wagon. Uh, this is your forward reverse switch here. So up top is reverse. Just hit the throttle and it goes in reverse. And then you press it down to go forward. Hit the throttle and it'll go forward. Uh, in the middle here is your neutral gear. However, the wagon won't move uh, when it's in neutral because the brakes are locked. To unlock the brakes, you just hit down on the throttle and then your brakes are unlocked and you can push and pull the, the wagon manually. Uh, that's pretty much it for your controls. Uh, there is this little plastic piece that uh, covers it. You can take that off. And this button here doesn't actually do anything, so uh, disregard that button there. All right, well, that concludes our boxing video. If you've purchased a wagon, I really appreciate your business. If not, you really got to get one of these because it'll simplify your beach trek. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All of our contact information is on the website, ebeachwagon.com.